Hey guys, so bezel smartphones have become a huge trend in 2017 and every new smartphone model has smaller bezels than the model before. But what about those cheap bezel smartphones from China? Are they any good? And where will it take us? So today in this video we'll have a closer look at the Maze Alpha 7 to see if those Chinese bezel smartphones are good or not. Where almost all you can see is the screen, how are companies and designers going to be able to differentiate the products in the future? How will they stand out? And even though almost every company nowadays releases a bezel-less phone, they are still very different and quality varies a lot. Here comes the Maze Alpha, one of China's cheapest bezel-less smartphones this year. And I was very surprised when even MKBHD and Unbox Therapy were talking about those cheap bezel-less phones like Doogie Mix. In my opinion, the brand Doogie is really not a good brand, but the marketing was amazing. The Doogie Mix is a phone I would never use as my main phone, but it has got some attention from all the big players because of its price and probably because of the condom-inspired package. So marketing is everything and also the renderings of the Maze Alpha look better than the phone looks in reality. I've seen a lot of reviews hyping this device like there would be no tomorrow. But today, in this review, I want to talk honest with you guys and show you the phone and all its flaws. I've got this phone from TomTop.com for around $180 which is really cheap for such a big phone and you guys can find the link down below in the description if you're interested. The display is impressive with a 6-inch 1080p LCD panel and also the colors are very vivid. There is a bit of visible color shifting, but for the price, really okay and there is absolutely no LCD bleeding. Also the build quality is very good and the materials feel just great. However, the phone is extremely heavy with its 225 grams carrying a massive 4000 mAh battery. For me this wouldn't be a daily driver just because of its size and weight. So first, it looks really impressive, but if you have a closer look, you still see kind of thick bezels and a huge chin at the bottom. It definitely looks cool, but to be honest, I like the design of my LG G6 way more. At the top, there is a small earpiece, which sounds really okay. And at the bottom, there is a front fingerprint scanner and the front facing camera is placed in the right bottom corner. Along the CNC milled aluminum frame, we can find a headphone jack, a Type-C USB port, fake dual speakers, the buttons on the right side and the dual SIM or SIM and micro SD card slot on the left. The back side is made of glass and is a huge fingerprint magnet, but feels amazing. At the top there is a single LED flash combined with the dual camera. Inside the box from TomTop you can find the phone, the charger with the cable and some accessories like a screen protector. The charger can output up to 18 watts and the phone supports MediaTek's Pump Express for quick charging. Charging the phone from 0 to 100% takes around 1 hour and 50 minutes. The battery performance is good and the phone lasted for me up to 6 hours of screen on time as a heavy user. So one day is no problem with this huge phone. For that very reasonable price you get 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage and a MediaTek Helio P25 2.5 gigahertz octa-core processor. It runs Android 7.0 and feels very snappy due to its very clean ROM. I was actually surprised that it already got 4 updates since I received the phone, but I really can't tell you what will happen in a year. The UI packs not really some fancy features, but it's very close to stock with some gestures included. The fingerprint scanner is not really fast, but works reliable and unlocks the phone 9 out of 10 times. The Helio P25 chipset is a mid-range option that doesn't deliver blistering results in benchmark tests, but for casual users it performs fine. Most of the apps start quickly and also gaming is okay and you can play most of the latest casual games on high to mid graphics without a massive amount of skipped frames. The touch screen is also fairly accurate, just sometimes I have issues with the one-handed mode at the bottom. 
So far it sounds amazing, right? But there's always one bad thing. And the camera in this device is terrible. First of all, let's get started with the front-facing camera. It's a 5 megapixel shooter and it's placed at the bottom of the device. That means every time you want to take a selfie and not look like super fat, you need to flip the phone upside down. Not a big deal, but the camera is not capable of producing good looking pictures. There is even noise under daylight conditions. Colors are washed out and dynamic range is really bad. Also, the front facing camera can only record in 480p, so for selfie lovers, better look at something different. The 30 megapixel rear cameras are not really different. Compared to my LG G6, it looks so different. So many lost details, bad dynamic range in colors, focus not accurate and slow, so camera wise, I can really not recommend the phone. And here are some sample clips. All right guys, there we go. Quick rear camera video test on the Maze Alpha and it's recording right now in 1080p 30. There is no optical image stabilization, there is no electronic image stabilization, so actually in the settings you can't really adjust many things. So there are just like three options and that's it. Now the footage regarding the colors, well it's very cloudy today so for sure the colors don't pop that much but as you can see um, color wise it looks a little bit washed out. Regarding the details if you check out all the edges there also it doesn't look very detailed and not very sharp at all. So um, yeah the rear camera video quality is like um, you can find on most of the $100 to $150 smartphones. Yo guys, what's up? Quick front-facing camera video test on the Maze Alpha and as you can see um, it looks pretty weird because if I look at the display I look up here and the camera is actually down there. So it makes sense to flip the smartphone but still um, as you can see if I look at the display I now look down because um, the camera position in the left um, bottom or right bottom corner it's very weird actually. And the front-facing camera does only record in 480p. Now, it would be okay if it would be 720p, I don't care about that. But at least colors and everything should look decent. But here on the Maze Alpha, well, as you can see, exposure, dynamic range, colors, it doesn't really look good. So the front-facing camera, even though it looks like a huge sensor, huge lens, um, the quality is not very good. Connectivity-wise, it was perfect. A good GPS with a fast fix, good Wi-Fi performance and 3G and 4G speeds. The speaker is not really good and sounds very tinny and flat and also is not really loud. However, the microphone quality and the call quality was just fine. So overall, the smartphone looks impressive at the first look. And if you compare the price to the new iPhone X, you can almost buy 6 Maze Alpha instead of 1 iPhone X, which is crazy. Keeping in mind that both get assembled in China. But there are some differences, and now let's talk about them. Alright guys, so we're now here at the end of this review, and here comes quickly my personal conclusion about the Maze Alpha and why I wouldn't use it as a main phone. So while it's incredibly cheap, as I've told you, 190 USD for those specs and that design, and compared to an iPhone X, this is very, very cheap. But um, don't get me wrong, even though the iPhone X is just super expensive, I would use the iPhone X, even though I don't like it, as a main phone and not this one. This has two reasons. Now, first of all, well, you pay really not a lot and I could buy six of those phones. But what shall I do with six of those phones, to be honest? I need one phone that works fine. And I'll probably use um, the LG G6. I mean, it's a little bit more expensive, like double the price of the Maze Alpha, but it's just like six times better in terms of improving my daily life. You need to um, actually focus on what's important for you. For me, it's very important to have a good camera, take pictures of my daily life, take pictures for social media, shoot some video clips if I don't have my camera right over here. And the camera on this device is terrible. Now, this is one of the worst cameras I've seen. You can say whatever you want to say. If you have good light, you get okay pictures. But in most cases, it's rainy, you don't have good light, and then a good camera, like semi-good camera, like on the LG G6, is just perfectly fine. Now the next thing is actually software updates. Well, Maze um, showed that they care about software updates. That's pretty good. Some Chinese brands like Elephone, a little bit also Doogie. Well, you won't see any software updates very soon. So far, this looked very good on the Maze Alpha. Also the Android ROM, well, it's very clean, very basic. Um, if you care about custom ROMs, you need to check how big the community is. 
All that is usually community driven and on MTK phones, the availability of custom ROMs is very limited due to MTK giving not out the sources, the source code which is needed to develop. On Qualcomm Snapdragon, perfectly fine. There are already tons of custom ROMs for the LG G6, which work fine, which get a lot of updates. So regarding software and customization, I'm also, again, not using a China phone as my main phone. But still, it's very impressive. It's so cheap. If you're interested, how those phones get produced, we have done a hidden camera, um, yeah, hidden camera video of a Chinese factory and Flo was there filming and they almost wanted to see us, so some crazy shit was going on there. But it's just sick how those people have to work. And I mean, it's the same for Apple. If you buy an iPhone, it also gets produced at Foxconn, which probably has even worse working conditions. But still, you know, I like to pay more, also have warranty, but I can understand why people buy it. And probably if I would be on a budget, I also wouldn't buy a fancy phone because as I've told you, it looks good, but lags behind of some things like the camera and other things. And if you're really into a budget phone, which is even cheaper than that one, then have a look at the Xiaomi um, 4X or X4, can't remember the name right now, but I think it's 4X and it looks really impressive. It has a good camera, you have MIUI, which is, well, you need to get used to it, but at least it gets updated, security patches and all that. And also overall availability of ROMs, software support is just way better than on this one here. But still, as I've told you, I'm very impressed by the smartphone, by the quality, but it's so super heavy, so huge. Camera placement, camera resolution, everything, it's nothing for me, so I couldn't use that as a main phone. But still, if you're interested, there's a link down below in the description to TomTop. They have it right now in stock for around 180, then feel free to check it out. I mean. It's very impressive if you show that phone to other people, they're always like, wow, that looks super cool. And yeah, but actually I'm more impressed by the Xiaomi Mi Mix 2, which has a Snapdragon 835. Not that I really need the performance, which is way better than on the P25 series, but still it's just a way more convenient system on chip in everything from software to um, compatibility. All right, guys, I really hope that you did enjoy this quick review and this quick talk about cheap battleless, mo cheap battleless smartphones from China. And yeah, um, the Doogie Mix 2, uh, Doogie Mix, there is no 2 version right now, is also really cheap, so you can also check it out. But yeah, they're basically all the same. So they lag behind on the camera department, but they look pretty cool. And well, you can't really... Um, see right now where the software support is going. So probably in six months when there's the next model, forget any support. But anyway, very cheap, very cool. And that was my quick review. All right, guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it. And if you're interested in the China factory tour or any news about the iPhone X, there's an info card up right here. I'm Steven from Tech Magnet. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a nice day.